So in this question eight, uh, we are probably going to look at something about the whole effect, but the orientation is slightly different than what we are used to. In your notes or normally in textbook, the magnetic field is going down from the top one. This one, they choose to shoot it in from the side, but you'll be right, it'll be okay. So there's a conducting material. And then we put in electrons in this direction. This is the direction of movement of electrons. So electrons is being sh shot, shot in this way. This is electrons. And your magnetic field with magnetic flux density B is going inside in this direction. Okay. For the free electrons moving in the slice, state the direction of force on an electron due to movement of the electron in the magnetic field. Okay, so this one need to take out some hands. Okay, so if you are like quite 3D challenge because you are used to seeing the world in two dimensions, I highly recommend you draw a top view. Na. Imagine you are staring at this slice from the top. Okay, so if you are staring at the slice from the top, what we will have is uh, thing to shape a rectangle okay so there is you look from the top there is p q s r right okay and you have the electrons coming in from the bottom i'm just going to draw one arrow to represent the electrons so basically, when you go in, the electrons are traveling with this direction of drift velocity. Okay, I'll zoom in a bit. Lah. So if it's traveling at this direction at drift velocity, your magnetic field or your magnetic flux density B, B is in this direction. I mean, B is the entire phase, lah, but this is B. So you do Fleming's left hand. Because now we have a moving charge inside a magnetic field. So FBI, B is pointed. I mean, you can try this right now in your own home. I don't think it would be the same. Okay, let me try to match my camera. Okay, so B is in this, no wait, B is in this direction. Right, let me think, yes. And then the current is the middle finger. So current should go against the direction of the electron. Okay, current is going against the direction of the electron, so current should point downwards. Okay, so where is this electron experiencing a force? Towards my face. Uh. Okay, or from your perspective, if you do this uh, with your hand, it's into the screen. So do it on your own, because uh, from my view, you will get very confused one. Do it on your own in front of the screen. Okay, your B will be, your pointing finger will be pointing towards your left. Towards your left. Pointing finger is towards your left. And then your middle finger is pointing downwards. Let me go and steal a Fleming's left hand from the internet. And see if I can orient it. <laughs> I like how the diagrams I find online looks a bit weird. Okay, so what we're looking for is your this pointing finger has to orient it towards that direction. So I'm going to rotate. I, mean, I shouldn't have flipped it. Flip means right hand become left hand. Rotate, rotate. So this pointing finger is in this direction. Okay. Your middle finger have to point downwards. Okay, now this is not working. But hopefully you'll be able to see that if your 
middle finger is pointing downwards. I can change this camera, but then that would take up too much time. So if you need help with your left hand, go watch the video or come and talk to me. Okay, FBI. So B is pointing in this direction. Current is pointing downwards. Your force on the magnetic, the magnetic force on the electron is actually in this direction here. So F uh, is actually into the paper. Try using your left hand. Okay, because I could change the orientation of the camera, but then it would take time. So use your left hand. This B is your middle finger. No, wait, this is a pointing finger. Index finger. And your middle finger should be pointing in this direction, going against the direction of current flow. This is middle finger. Okay, so your thumb should be pointing inwards into the plane. So this electron will begin to accumulate at the bottom plane. All right, so it's just take out your left hand. The electrons will be here. Will accumulate on this face. Yeah, not. If all the electrons drift towards the bottom face, what happens to the top face? Top face becomes positively charged. Though. So this entire face on top will be positively charged. Positive. So you now have set up your whole voltage. I mean, I haven't read the question yet, but I'm assuming that they will ask you where the whole voltage is. So the whole voltage will naturally be between this phase and this phase. Here to here is your VH. Okay, so using the Fleming's left hand is very important because it allows you to decide where the electron will drift. So use your fingers and your hands to see that the electrons will go downwards. Okay, so the direction of the force, eh, can you say down? I would feel safer if I say towards the face of M, L, J, K. I mean, that's me. La. But I guess in this orientation, down is probably also acceptable. So you could say, just to cover all your bases, downwards, towards the face. What's the face again? M, L, KJ. But downwards is good enough. Identify the phases between which the potential difference is developed. So the phases between the potential di difference is PQSR and MLJK. So PQSR. Explain why the potential difference in A part 2 reaches a maximum value. So when we put more and more charges on the bottom and the top face, you set up an electric field, right? Okay, so I'll represent the electric field with a purple arrow. Lah. So the electric field in this top and bottom face would be from the positive plate to the negative plate. Lah. So this is the direction of your electric field. Direction of your E field. This is E. If E is in this direction, the force on the electron will be opposite to the direction of E. So this is Fe. And the green color force is due to magnet. So this is Fb. So when you add more charge, the field becomes stronger. Electric force becomes stronger. Top phase becomes more and more positive. Electrons will be more and more attracted upwards. So when the electron gets attracted downwards due to magnet, upwards due to electric, you reach a point where they both cancel out. Then the potential difference will stay the same. 
So we have to try to write this down, which is, by the way, also in the notes, okay? So you could say that um, as more charges accumulate on the faces PQSR and MLJK, the electric field between both faces becomes stronger or larger in magnitude. Second point, maximum value of V occurs when the electric force on the electron is equal to the magnetic force on the electron. So we can say the electron is no longer deviated to the bottom plate, to the bottom face, or just deviated to MLJK. So VH doesn't change anymore. VH stays the same. The mark is actually this one and this one. I'm writing this as a conclusion so it fits in your brain. Because our understanding was the electrons will go downwards. So if you just want to leave this here and crop a new picture. Because our understanding is the electrons will move to the down the face below, making the bottom face positively charged and the top face negatively charged. So as long as the electrons doesn't move, man, like this now. So as long as the electrons cannot move anymore because the forces cancel out, then the VH will not increase, no? Because VH is here to here. Currently, the electrons are being sent sent in this direction, downwards. It's going to look weird, but sent to this side. So if the forces, the magnetic force pulling downward and the electric force pulling upward cancel off because this top phase is positive, ma. then the electric field, the electron can no longer go down. So electron no longer deviated to MLJK. Okay, so VH stay constant. All right, next part. The number of free electrons per unit volume in the slice of material is 1.3 times 10 to the power of 29. So this is your N, number density. Thickness PQ of the slice is 0 0.1 mm. This is T. Magnetic flux density B is, okay, fine. Calculate the potential difference across the slice for a current of this much. So this is a bonus question. Uh. By bonus, I mean uh, you can find the question inside the equation needed inside your page 3. Okay, so the equation looks like this. So I'm also doing this for the last minute people. Uh, didn't watch video or you speed run watching the video and you don't understand what on earth is happening half of the time. Why you do this to yourself, man? Why? Something is wrong with my mouse today. Okay, lie. So, use this equation, no? can find in front. So, copy first. Bi over NTQ. You don't even need to rearrange. Do we have B? Yes, we do. 4.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. My equation in the notes, I prefer Bi over net because I can memorize. Ma. Can Pronounce means can memorize easier. But this is also fine. Times 10 to the power of negative 4 ampere. Making sure everybody is SI. 
Number of electrons per unit volume is number density, so we can use directly, no need to divide by volume, 29. Thickness is 0 0.1 mm, convert to meter. And Q, Q is the value of electronic charge. Okay, this Q is equal to E, and this one you can find in page 2 of your exam sheet if you need it. If you remember it, like me, that will be easier. Don't have to flip here, flip there. Because uh, you are not given an, a data booklet separately. It comes together. Hall voltage is supposed to be smaller. Okay, so... What is the VH that you get? Because I got a really small value, like 1.40 times 10 to the power of negative 12. 1.393, la, but 1.4. Very small, probably cannot measure 1, negative 12. Okay, slice in C is a matter, oh no wonder. By reference to your answer in C, suggest why Hall probe are usually made using semiconductors rather than metals. So semiconductor has less charge carriers per unit volume. They are not as mobile. Remember, you, if you have watched the video in quantum physics, you will know that more of the electrons inside your semiconductor exist inside the valence band, but not inside the conduction band. Okay, so I will say that the semiconductors have a much smaller number of charge carriers per unit volume com this is n la, so i'll just bracket n compared to metals okay then you can say since vh is equal to bi over nqt smaller n means there is a this means VH for semiconductors are larger and more easily measured. Don't just stop at larger. La. You should explain why we want larger. Because they are talking about using the whole probe. So the term easily measured should also be that, not just larger. So because this negative trough is kind of small, small. Okay. So this is the question about whole probe.